All right guys, we are back with another video and today I'm gonna to run through some mistakes upon reflection that I've made in the last 12 months in regards to sports cards. A lot of you guys ask me for advice on sports cards, but I still make a lot of mistakes myself. So let's have a little bit of fun here, poke fun at myself and yeah, let's talk about these mistakes. So these mistakes have actually cost me either time, effort or money, but yeah, they all vary in some little way. So let's start it off. So the first mistake I uh, have made Made definitely recently. I've definitely cut back on it. I don't really do it as much anymore uh, for a few reasons. And that's actually buying collections overseas. Now I think you can actually find some really nice collections overseas, find them under comps, but the issue more so, uh, and especially more so for me because I do like more my low end, my mid end sort of stuff. So there's a lot of bulk there. And when there's bulk, there's a higher weight attached to it when shipping to Australia. And the issue with that is, Yes, you can find some collections overseas at a good price, but shipping it to Australia is a lot of money. So I haven't done one of these big get it shipped international shipments in a long, long while, which were, you know, 10 kilos plus or anything like that, because the last one I did, which was probably in December last year in terms of a really, really, really big package, ended up costing me like eight to $900 uh, Australian to ship here. So you've got to think about it when you're obviously organizing into spreadsheets and then you're trying to work out what the total value of the lot itself was and then you've got to actually factor in the shipping it does cut into your profit a little bit that way and then if you guys don't remember as well from that video that shipment itself actually did get seized or stopped by customs and they ended up wanting me to send in a bunch of paperwork basically just verifying the total cost of it so i ended up having to pay uh, 10 percent uh, tax or whatever it is the actual customs fee for it and i think i'm a little bit over that in terms of getting it shipped over here having to worry if i'm gonna have to pay a customs fee or not so i'd rather just kind of buy everything locally and there are some really nice collections as you as you guys have seen in my latest mail days down here in australia that i've picked up i just think with america having to get it all shipped over factoring the cost having to worry about customs and how heavy it is it really is uh, not in my plans to do more so in the future now. The second thing that I wanna talk about that I've made a mistake on kind of ties into that first one. It's another reason why I don't do it as much and it's buying so many cards that you can't list everything. So for those that don't know, I this isn't my full-time job. This is a hobby of mine that I started four years ago on YouTube and then sports cards has just been a thing in my life now since just before COVID. But I also work uh, a full-time job five days a week. Obviously I do YouTube content. I have an eBay store as well, but I've got other things going on in my life and I don't even have kids yet. So that's actually the thing I'm worried about if I have kids in the future, how much of that will get taken away from this time because people always say when they have kids, you lose a lot of that time that you want for yourself, whether it's exercising, catching up with friends and this is where I've almost cut down a lot of the stuff that I want to buy. I think an important rule to understand that I've and I always say this as well to myself like I'm always like oh you know this is a really great deal I've got to buy it um, because you never know when the next one will come but really it should be the other way around deals will always come and no matter how long it's been I think I'm also quite fortunate that I have a YouTube channel a lot of people know who I am so I do get a lot of messages from people asking for me to look at their collection or to buy their cards. So I do have it a little bit easier than a lot of people, but yeah, I think it's gone past that time where I would be buying off a lot of the collections and instead I've almost got to be prioritizing what collections I think will make me the most money quicker. Because again, a lot of people will send you cards with like, 500 cards for example and there might not be a, a massive card to make up the, the total lot cost back so you've almost got to work out in your own head if i'm going to be pushing my ass out to 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 try and sell this collection off and then make you know a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars is it really worth my time that's almost where i've started to kind of look at what I think the total profit will be and whether I think it will be worth my time. I think a great example of that is I've recently did a mail day uh, about a month ago where I bought a collection for $4,000 and in my head I was almost debating the entire time what cards in this lot are actually gonna make me money and if they're liquid or not because a lot of um, the cards in that collection that I did post were NFL and even though they had some really nice players in there, unfortunately, NFL in Australia is a smaller market. So I was just trying to think in my own head, 
if I can sell those cards off and if there was enough NBA cards which are more liquid for me to buy that collection. And I spoke about it before, I, I paid $4,000 for that lot itself. When the, the seller actually told it to me, he said that he thought it, the collection would be worth $8,000 plus. And in my own head, I'm like, $4,000, how, how much work am I gonna have to do to actually sell it off? And in the end, it only took me about two weeks to recoup that money and it wasn't like I was pushing it out straight away. It, looked, it, it took me a couple of Facebook sales to really make back that money and then also just having it up at card shows. So again, a massive factor into me buying collections at the moment is trying to work out, is it gonna be worth my time? Am I going to actually be able to sell this card quite easily? Because again, with a lot of this sort of stuff, you've got to try and find a buyer. It doesn't matter if someone tells you that their collection is worth a thousand dollars, even though they've comped it out at, for example, six or seven hundred dollars. Can you find a buyer for it? How much quantity is there and how much effort is actually needed to sell the collection off? The last mistake I do want to talk about is, and it's very, it happens to a lot of people and it can be for good and bad reasons for sure, but it's getting to a card show and almost being desperate to make a deal at the card show. So a couple of years ago, the Hobby Hangout ran its first ever show and at the time, I wasn't the greatest in terms of organizing because I was also recording content. I was going around at tables, looking at cards, admiring them. But by the time it got to the end of the show, I kind of thought to myself, I haven't actually bought a card yet, like a massive card. And I almost felt like I had to. And I don't know, looking back at it now, I mean, there's a few reasons why this didn't work out in the end, which I'll explain, but I almost became really desperate to buy a card. And then uh, a person I knew actually had a bunch of cards uh, in his in his case. Um, so then when he was kind of showing them off, I was like, well, I like Ben Simmons and I wouldn't mind getting a card. It'd be a really cool card to kind of get for the PC or as an investment, I believed in him. But I was almost desperate to make a deal just for the sake of it. Now this card has gone down probably 90%. Uh, I think it actually has gone down 90% uh, in the time that I've bought it and I've almost held it stupidly because I don't want to cut my losses but regardless it's never going to go up to the actual price of what I bought it for but I paid $400 and if you go to my very first hobby hangout vlog you'll see me talking about this card very excitedly. This was the first card I actually bought towards the end and it was a Ben Simmons team color match. I really like the eye appeal behind his BGS 9.5. Again I didn't really need to buy it but I was more so in the kind of mood to make sure that I came out of the show with a really nice card. And I think going to these shows itself, you don't need to be buying a, a card just to say you've been to a show or to feel like that you've come out of the show successfully. I think nowadays this card is worth like, honestly, sub $50. Um, but yeah, I think it's, I, I don't mind keeping it because it's kind of like a nice little reminder for myself to, to understand that if you go to a card show, just focus on what you want at the time, whether it's finding great value in the bargain boxes, finding value in people's showcase. You don't need to be making a deal just for the sake of making a deal. Now this goes the other way as well, because as a seller, I found that I've also made some really poor deals in terms of buying and trading cards. And I do think I've gotten better at it. Now the first couple of shows I set up at as a dealer, you know, obviously as a dealer, I don't know if any of you guys know uh, if, you, if you haven't set up as a dealer, but a lot of people will come up to the table asking for you to buy their cards or if you're up for trades. And I think for me personally, I'm also a really bad person at being confrontational in a way. And I know this isn't confrontational, but me saying no to someone is, for me, feels a bit confrontational, which sounds very, very stupid when you say it now, but when people would come up to the table at the start and say, oh, would you trade this for this card? I almost was like desperate to make a deal in that way as well. And I think I've gotten better at that because I almost try to be a bit more firmer in the negotiation. And I think I've learned that from really good negotiators over the last couple of years at Cardshows. You do learn a lot when you're negotiating with people. Sometimes you just need to hold firm and actually, you know, actually go through comps themselves. Again, it goes with the second point I made before, but work out if the effort is worth it. And that's why when I trade at shows now, I try to make sure there's a little bit of something in it for me. Sometimes I'm happy to you know, feed it both ways, but I also try to make sure that sometimes with trading, you do have to favor it in your way because in you know, money is king at the end of the day. And sometimes when you get traded a card, you still have to move that card on. And you've all probably dealt with people who are almost pushing away and are almost saying like, come on, let's make a deal, let's make a deal. But learning how to say no and almost 
Learning how to actually just work out if the value is there has been a skill in its own right for me personally because, again, it's I as someone in my position, I don't know, I've always kind of felt like I want to kind of please people, but sometimes you just have to say no because it's not going to work out for you, so why would you take that burden on? Obviously, uh, still a learning process for me. I think with these shows and generally in cards itself, you do learn a lot of skills, whether it comes to negotiation, communication, all that sort of stuff. So I'm still learning along the way and I'm sure there will be some more mistakes to come. But yeah, that's it for this video. I just want to run through three mistakes that I kind of reflected that over the last 12 months. If you've got some mistakes that you guys have made uh, over this period, I hope to find out from you guys. So leave a like down below and comment down below some of the mistakes that you have. There is no judgment down below. So please let me know what you guys have done. Also hit the subscribe button down below if you haven't subscribed already and yeah guys, I'll see you all in the next video. Take care.